Yiddish is one of those languages or literatures. Uh, the same is true of Anglophone Caribbean literature, incidentally, that is so small that no part of it is very far from any other part. And it comes from a people who are under such severe stress from the empires around them that every part of it is related to uh, the craving for political freedom and, and political progress with the sort of socialistic hint uh, throughout. Nothing is entirely uh, apart from that. Even the artists, writers, and so forth who think of themselves as esthetes and don't want to be pinned down into some kind of didactic literary thing. That's uh, really uh, the first thing. And uh, the second thing is, you know, I'm, as a social historian, I'm just fascinated with a writer like Leon Cobran, who is in 1900 writing short stories that fit one column in the foreword. They have to be that length. But because he could write, in amazingly in the Yiddish press, about prostitutes and down and out people and the life of the tenements, in addition to illness and exploitation and so forth, uh, he was known as the Jewish Zola. Uh, Zola, Emil Zola being the great hero of naturalism or realism at the time. So, uh, and in fact, uh, in the introduction to this uh, big volume of collected works, Colburn says he was reading Zola and thinking about Zola. And as he thought, well, what will I do to be able to uh, write these short stories? And he wanted to write plays and so forth. But uh, he had the direct eye level vision of the world around him. And boy, he was able to do a lot literarily with that. 